Also available on Facebook, facebook.com slash CRN Talk. That's facebook.com slash CRN Talk. Also on Roku, Tiki Live, Periscope, Twitch, anywhere you find high quality content. We are there. I'm joined by Mr. Richard Nixon. He's a practicing attorney, noted author of America and Illusion of Freedom, constitutional scholar, and as well as an amateur conga player and Corvette aficionado. Richard, how are you? Wonderful, and kudos to our protesters in Hong Kong. May they keep waving the American flag and singing the American national anthem. Absolutely. We talked about that in previous sessions. Still going on, and I think it's in its 15th week. We uh, stand in solidarity with all of freedom yearning peoples. And Richard, we got a big show today, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we're going to talk about birthright citizenship. We're going to talk about uh, employment and equal protection here in California. But we're gonna, first off, we're going to talk about an interesting story that came across my feed today. This is a, an interesting conflict, you might say, between the Ninth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals and also the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. This has to do with uh, the Eighth Amendment cruel and unusual punishment, but in a very interesting manner. Uh, recently, it was ruled that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ordered the state of Idaho to provide sexual reassignment surgery for a transgender inmate. The, ruler is the, the ruling is the first time an appeals court has ordered a state to provide gender-affirming surgery to a prisoner because this prisoner, in their legal briefs, said that if they did not receive this sexual reassignment surgery, it amounted to cruel and unusual punishment, Eighth Amendment violation. Richard, your thoughts? Well, that was a double entendre when you mentioned the prisoner's briefs. <laughs> and anyway, uh, let me say this, that uh, the Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals on Friday pared back an injunction that had blocked nationwide a Trump administration immigration restriction and counseled lower courts to reserve such a sweeping judicial mechanism for exceptional cases. Now, the reason I mention that, Mike, hot on the heels of uh, this transsexual situation is because the Ninth Circuit has now realized that these nationwide injunctions really serve no purpose because it basically prevents other circuits, like in the case that you just cited, from having an opposite or opposing view such that the whole point of the adversarial system in our country is to have the best arguments presented to an awake and alert judge so that he, the judge or she, frankly, can make the most enlightened decision based upon the facts that these two enlightened uh, fact finders or, or attorneys present them. And if you stifle that by having one universal injunction that covers the whole country, then you prevent the other jurisdictions and there are 13 judicial district, federal judicial districts throughout the country. You prevent that adversarial dialogue. Uh, I want to talk more about that, and I see what you did there with Hot on the Heels as well, Richard. We'll be right back right after the break. We're having a good time here in the Legal Lounge, CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com. Make sure to drop us a note on Facebook, facebook.com slash CRNTalk. And follow Richard on Twitter, at Richard A. Nixon 1, at Richard A. Nixon 1. Stay with us. The following ad contains shocking material. Listener discretion is advised. Is someone in your family playing a dangerous game of Russian roulette? Over 43,000 people die a year from drug overdose. 120 people a day. Five people every hour. One person every 12 minutes. 88,000 people die every year from alcohol abuse. Over 240 people a day. 10 an hour. One person every six minutes. Some Somebody you know may be next. Learn how to help someone you love get away from the drugs, alcohol, and bad influences. With the FMLA, people can take a leave of absence from their job and still keep it. Call Quit Drugs 321 now at 800-378-3315, 800-378-3315, 800-378-3315. That's 800-378-3315. And we are 
right back here in the Legal Lounge, CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com. Richard Nixon live broadcasting coast to coast and around the world. And Richard, I, I want to probe this this uh, most recent Ninth Circuit decision concerning this transgender Eighth Amendment qualification. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, it, first of all, is this like, you know, brass tacks truly an Eighth Amendment violation if we're not providing this particular inmate sexual reassignment surgery? Well, again, I, it's my opinion that this whole thing is, if you will, much ado about nothing because the Eighth Amendment, as we know, it's part of the Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights goes back to 1791. And we know that the Bill of Rights was intended to apply to the federal government only. We've said this many, many times. I hope our listeners uh, understand uh, the significance of that. In other words, it was never intended to apply to the state governments or the people in individual states and the laws that they pass. However, the Supreme Court has found that the Eighth Amendment, part of the Bill of Rights, intended to apply to the federal government only, does apply to the states. And this is how the states can, if you will, micromanage, excuse me, this is how the Supreme Court can micromanage the states by simply applying the Bill of Rights to the states. And what's interesting about this, and it leads on to a further topic that we briefly uh, teased at the beginning of the show, is when two courts, two district courts or two courts of appeals, in this case, the Ninth Circuit and the uh, Fifth Circuit, are in disagreement or uh, they're across purpose. Yes. And so you know, this leads to something that uh, about nationwide injunctions. For example, the Ninth, the Ninth Circuit recently uh, uh, has an, uh, employed a nationwide injunction regarding immigration and what, how, how is that enforceable when one particular district court that's supposed to only cover a certain number of states and issues a nationwide injunction in contribution to other courts' previous uh, arguments regarding that? Well, that's right. And in fact, you see, initially, or at least all of us that went to law school were taught that a judge's order applies only to those parties before the judge. Mm -hmm. It cannot extend to someone who is not a party to the to the lawsuit or in privity to someone that is to say somehow connected however these nationwide injunctions seem to violate that very basic rule and justice thomas uh goes out on a limb and says these nationwide injunctions are in fact in, improper and if he gets a chance he will uh, <laughs> he will correct that situation well in anticipation of that the ninth circuit which normally at least given our experience, our recent experience, has a history of going against uh, President Trump. This time kind of went in his favor, but the article that I read was very careful to say that one of those judges was a Trump appointee. Mm -hmm. And I think the issue, the issue we're talking about, the issue before the Ninth Circuit concerning this case was about asylum seeking, correct? Yes, absolutely. The point is that Trump is saying that if you're coming from a uh, I think it's El Salvador, one of the three countries that uh, they come from going through Mexico to the United States, that the first thing, if they're going to claim asylum, they must apply for asylum in Mexico first. Mm -hmm. uh, that way they, they don't pile up at our southern border for asylum. Well, the Ninth Circuit basically said, nope, you can't do that. We're going to enjoin you from doing that, and it's nationwide. And now the Ninth Circuit reviewing Justice Tiger's decision that it was nationwide has pared it down so that only people going from California uh, will be limited. Uh, the borders of New Mexico and Texas, uh, they, President Trump has prevailed in those areas. Yeah, and, and that, that should, the question should be asked, you know, should asylum law be administered differently in Texas than it is in California? That's actually one of what the, uh, the justices quoted in their dissent. Well, that's right. But you see, that's exactly what our system was all about, the so-called federalist system, we have literally 50 different, maybe 51 uh, different uh, circumstances and court systems that will disagree with each other. And that's why it goes up to the next uh, series of courts to resolve those differences between the lower courts. And if we get a situation like the Ninth Circuit disagrees with the Fifth Circuit on a particular issue, it is ripe for the Supreme Court to resolve that difference. 
Uh, so that's that the buck stops at the Supreme Court. Exactly. Unfortunately, not at Congress, where I think you know we'd that's all right. hope this would this would be adjudicated because we need Congress to pass laws. Otherwise, we're having these district courts making law from the bench, and then ultimately the Supreme Court making law as well. Exactly, Mike. And again, given if we do have two uh, very robustly uh, argued and decided in two different jurisdictions, uh, again. It gives the justices, the Supreme Court justices, the best environment to, if you will, hopefully come to the truth. That's uh, absolutely, and so that, that's you know, this is fascinating to me because, you know, sadly, and one of the great points of Richard's book and his legal philosophy is that Congress has completely abandoned their duties and is now allowing the Supreme Court and the lower courts to make policy, not only law. Yes, exactly. Very well said, Mike. And so what's happening here is that we have the Fifth Circuit, which represents, you know, some of the southern border states, and then the Ninth Circuit, which represents some of the western border states yes. in conflict. And so, you know, like we said, like we said, I mean, it's a federalist system where each state, you know, ideally, according to the framers, would have their own community standards. But now this is set for a nationwide law. And again, what would happen if they were nationwide and the Ninth Circuit issued a nationwide uh, ban? And then the Fourth Circuit, maybe the next day, without even being privy to the Ninth Circuit, issues a nationwide ban somehow contradicting the Ninth. Uh, now what do you do? You've got two contradicting nationwide bans. It, they, they can't uh, coexist. So this is why it makes only perfect sense that each court be limited to its respective Boundaries. Well, let me ask you this, Richard. You know, as a, you know, doing this show has been quite an education to me, and I've also watched quite a lot of Law and Order. But <laughs> so let's say a lot of times lower courts will refer to precedent set by these upper courts, these uh, Fifth and Ninth Circuit Court yes. of Appeals. And so yes. let's say one lawyer, one case out of Texas uses precedent from the Fifth Circuit uh, uh, Court of Appeals decision, and one lawyer from California uses the Ninth Circuit. Who's yeah. right? Well, again, See, that's a very interesting question, who's right, because lawyers can't answer that question. All lawyers can do is prevent or put the best face on their particular client at the time. Mm -hmm. There really is no right and wrong like there is in mathematics and physics. Uh. In law, it's the best argument given the particular facts given the particular client at the time. The best argument given and the best argument received by those more willing to receive that argument. <laughs> Absolutely. Interesting, interesting. We're going to talk more. We're going to talk a little bit about birthright citizenship after the break. This is a big issue, a hot-button issue that's entered the public consciousness. We've got a lot of good stuff coming up as well. Maybe talk about equal protection and employee rights here in California. Uh, so you guys stick around. Any questions, comments, or concerns, shoot Richard an email or richardnixon at crntalk.com. Uh, follow him on Twitter at Richard A. Nixon 1. Drop us a note on Facebook, facebook.com slash CRN Talk. I am monitoring the chat right now. And Valerie, Valerie uh, chimed in and said Hello, she, Valerie. she really enjoyed the briefs joke. So we appreciate that, Valerie. <laughs> okay, very good. Stick around. You guys will be right back right after the break here in the Legal Lounge, CRN Digital Talk Radio, crntalk.com. <laughs> What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1 800 785 9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1 800 785 9618. 
That's 1-800-785-9618. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? News flash, the president has changed the tax laws. And now, you may be able to pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, the tax doctor can help you pay the IRS as little as possible allowed by law. There are new tax laws for business owners, the self-employed, even W-2 workers. If you have a back tax problem or a few years of unfilled returns, new help to save you money is now here. Call right now to see how the new tax laws can help you. Plus, right now, we'll waive the consultation fee and give you a free tax savings report. Attention business owners, the self-employed, and W-2 workers. Make this free call to the tax doctor now and learn how to take advantage of the new tax laws that may help you pay the IRS less. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. Legendary food critic Meryl Schindler talks about the Hill Street Cafe in Burbank, California. The Hill Street Cafe in Burbank, California, 3301 North Glen Oaks Boulevard, open seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And when I say breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I mean menus that give you everything you can possibly want. I'm looking at the dinner menu here. They got every sort of sandwich and salad. And not only do they have burgers and hot dogs, but they have burgers and hot dogs made with Beyond Meat and Beyond Sausage. They have a fitness menu. They have senior dining. It is a full-service restaurant with a lot of I should mention, very good beers and wines. And they have a back room that is semi-private, fits up to 50 people. They offer delivery through Chow Now, Grubhub, Postmates, DoorDash, and Uber Eats. They allow filming at the restaurant as well. Parking lot is great. A lot over 60 spots. It's a terrific restaurant, and I love the fact that it's something for everybody. Hill Street Cafe, 3301 North Glen Oaks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Here in the Legal Lounge, having a good time here on a Tuesday afternoon. We are here every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific Time and 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you're hearing this during the weekend, you're hearing a replay. Because we want to get this information out to the people. Richard Nixon, attorney at law and constitutional scholar. And one of the things uh, people think is initially in the Constitution, and correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, is the birthright citizenship. But birthright citizenship actually came later, right? Absolutely. The birthright citizenship goes to the 14th Amendment. Uh, and the 14th Amendment was ratified in 1868. That is just after the Civil War. And the purpose of this, uh, this it's Section 1 of the 14th Amendment, also known as the Citizenship Clause, was in, in order to provide citizenship and therefore franchisement for former slaves. Basically, that's it, yes. And basically, let's quote the 14th Amendment. It basically says, Section 1, all persons born or naturalized in the United States now this is the important phrase, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Now the problem is that of late, maybe the last 30, 40 years, we have taken that little clause or phrase and subject to the jurisdiction thereof and simply eliminated it. And so it's re- it reads as all persons born or naturalized in the United States are citizens of the United States. And history tells us, and the text tells us, that that is an incorrect reading. And also precedent tells us that as well. A case from 1897, United States versus Wong Kim Ark. The Supreme Court ruled that a child born in the United United States uh, of parents of Chinese descent who are at the time of his birth are subjects of the Emperor of China, but have a permanent domicile and residence in the United States, and that they're carrying on business, are not employed in any diplomatic official capacity, uh, becomes uh, not a citizen of the United States. Am I correct about that, Richard? Well... No, that, that's kind of a, a outlier, that particular case. The actual cases that have discussed it uh, was the uh, case called, uh, now that you mention it, it has to do with the uh, case in Louisiana, uh, let's see, 1879, having to do with the um, 
uh, butchers, where they were arguing that... Uh, uh, the slaughterhouse cases. The slaughterhouse yeah. cases, exactly. And basically what it said, and there was a case uh, regarding uh, an American Indian who was born here. I say here because he was born within the United States, but he was born on his Indian reservation. He was born here and wanted to vote when he got old enough to vote under the 15th Amendment. If you're a citizen, you can vote. He tried to vote. He was denied the right to vote, and the issue became whether or not he was a citizen. And the court was very uh, proper and very uh, polite to this uh, American Indian and basically said the, the question becomes if you're born in this country and you're vying for citizenship based upon your being born here the issue becomes the allegiance that your parents owed to this country when you were born yeah and so it makes it very clear that what the court was saying is that if your parents were foreigners uh, ambassadors, consuls, uh, people from other countries that are visiting, etc. That is to say, if you, if your parents were other than people who owed allegiance to the United States, your born, your being born here does not confer citizens citizenship upon the child. And I want to talk about we're heading up to the break right now, and I'm saying yeah, I misquoted that case. I'm t I, was, I meant the slaughterhouse case, but I had the Wong Kim case in front of me. But like you said, Richard, I mean it comes down to allegiance, and when you have uh, people coming in from across the border who are still sovereign citizens of another country, do do they have allegiance to the United States? And I think it even comes more paramount when you read about how much of, of remittances are being sent back by a lot of uh, illegal aliens who live in the United States who are continuing to send back. Um, monies, uh, taxable income to the United States that it is instead being sent back to their country of origin. Uh, it's very, very, and, and not trying to, you know, take the appropriate steps that a lot of legal and lawful immigrants have by yes. uh, you know, studying languages and whatnot, participating in the community and society, uh, you know, to really prove their allegiance to this great nation. But we want to talk more about birthright citizenship and possible challenges thereof after the break. Uh, President Trump said he will try to end birthright citizenship. Lindsey Graham has proposed legislation uh, uh, to that effect. So we're going to talk more about that right after the break, you guys. Any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to shoot us an email at richardnixon at crntalk.com. Also drop us a note on Facebook, facebook.com slash crntalk. Stay with us. For the getaway of your dreams, come to Hawaii's playground, Kaanapali Beach Resort, on the fun side of Maui, where the world comes to play. Find your spot on Kaanapali Beach with three miles of white sand, 12 resort properties, two golf courses, and two shopping centers. Enjoy the playground of Hawaii's ancient royalty. Kaanapali Beach Resort is Hawaii's original master planned destination resort and home of the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. With views of two neighboring islands, you can breathe in the land's natural beauty from your favorite resort or golf fairway. Come experience Kaanapali's own special brand of Hawaiian hospitality with world-class dining, relaxing resorts, water sports, and activities of every kind. For romantic, family, and great friend getaways, discover the options of Kaanapali Beach Resort, where the world comes to play. Plan your getaway today. Visit kaanapaliresort.com. That's K-A-A-N-A-P-A-L-I resort.com. Imagine this is your money and someone wants to take it from you. Who is it? The IRS. They want your money, and guess what? They can legally take it, all of it if they want. Remember, they sent you that letter that said, hey, you owe us a bunch of cash and we're going to take it from you. So what do you do? Fight back by letting our team of experts at the tax helpline work it out with the IRS so you can keep your money. And we're good at what we do. When you hire us, you get a team of guys on your side that know the IRS laws and will fight to save your money. So if you owe the IRS a ton of cash and you want to keep it, call right now and learn for free how we can help you put it back in your pocket. 800-932-1597. 800-932-1597. Eight hundred nine three two one five nine seven. 
That's 800-932-1597. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Ruth's Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef, broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at RuthsChris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Hello, CRN listeners. I'm Michael Horn. And you know, you've all helped build my pillow into the amazing company that it is today. Now, Michael Lindell, the inventor and CEO of my pillow, wants to give back to my listeners. You can get great discounts on all my pillow products if you go to mypillow.com right now and click on the radio listener specials. You can save up to 50% off on my pillows, mattress toppers, bed sheets, and so much more. For example, the body pillow, normally $89.99, but with the promo code code winner it's only $29.99 remember all my pillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee and a 10-year warranty just go to mypillow.com click on the radio listener specials save up to 50% off including the body pillow for only $29.99 enter promo code winner or call 800-513-3363 for these great specials for the best night's sleep in the whole wide world visit mypillow.com and we are back here in the legal lounge crn digital talk radio crntalk.com thank you so much for joining us and we always like to shout this out uh, richard was a, a is is excuse me a vet thank you for your service richard thank you and if anybody knew richard during his time of service 63 to 65 the united states army stateside or as a contractor in vietnam in country in 1968 give us a call here at the office 818-818-6400, and we like to connect vets, maybe have a couple drinks, and we'll also give you a free copy of Richard's Absolutely. fantastic book, America, An Illusion of Freedom, and if uh, that's also available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and iTunes. It's a fantastic read. It makes a great gift as well. Talking about birthright citizenship, 14th, uh, 14th Amendment, Citizenship Clause, Section 1, and uh, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, he says he'd like to repeal birthright citizenship. He thinks that that was uh, one of the major causes of illegal immigration. Illegal immigrants will come here across the border illegally and then have children, and because those children were born here on U.S. soil, they are de facto United States citizens. Richard, does he have the legal standing to do that, or is this going to take an, an, an amendment to the Constitution to do that? Well, I believe that he has the legal standing because we're fortunate this one of the few places where the Constitution is very clear in terms of text because it does say to repeat that uh, subject to the jurisdiction thereof requires that the parents were excluded, uh, American Indians who maintain their tribal ties, and any, any person born here whose parents were foreigners, aliens, or belong to families of ambassadors or foreign ministers. So the point is, we have the text that tells us exactly who becomes a citizen when born here, and we actually have documentation from a Senator Howard from Michigan, who in 1868 was the author of the Citizenship Clause, and it's very clear what he meant, what he said. So it's, again, if we simply go by the text and the history, there's no question that the president is on the right track and that he is interpreting the Constitution properly. And since the president takes an oath to uphold the laws of the country, he would be upholding a constitutional provision, and therefore I think he needs not go to Congress for additional uh, aid. 
Well, let me ask you this, Richard, is more of a philosophical policy question. Do you think if the, the Trump administration did eliminate birthright citizenship in any particular way, that would be a significant deterrent to curbing illegal immigration? Absolutely. I mean, there's no question about it that uh, and I've written an article and I called it the 14th Amendment and self-deportation because basically what would happen is the very proud parents of this little baby who was born in San Diego would go to the welfare office or some other federal institution and say our baby was born here we want some kind of federal aid and the bureaucrat would say fine let me see the baby's certificate and they would show it to him and then the bureaucrat would then say well where are you, the parents from where are you from Do you, were you born here or where and oh no we're from El Salvador San Salvador whatever and at that point, the bureaucrat would properly say, I'm sorry, but under the Constitution as written and as properly applied by uh, the president, you, I should say, your baby is not a citizen and therefore does not qualify for any kind of federal aid, and I'm sorry. And I think based upon that, once that knowledge seeped through to the communities, uh, they would, if you will, self-deport. Well, let me come come back at you a little bit there, Richard. Sure. What perhaps that what you just said is quite logical, but perhaps maybe what we would see is we would see the wage earners of these illegal immigrants coming from El Salvador and from Guatemala leaving the country to come to the United States to earn a living and leaving the children at home back in the home countries. And so now that's a, a problem twofold. You have uh, pretty much orphan children back, back in these uh, countries such as Guatemala and El Salvador, which would exasperate the problems already there. And also you're taking uh, these wage earners who might put that that, uh, their wages back into the economy in terms of uh, consumer spending and sending that money back home. What do you think about that argument? Well, again, but we could only solve one problem at a time. And, of course, I'm concerned, as, as I kiddingly said, maybe President Trump has finally read my book because he and I are 1,000% in accord that at least solving the one problem, that is birthright citizenship, where the problem with it is this. If you allow, there are two ways that a person can become a citizen, either being born here and have parents who owe allegiance to this country or through naturalization. In either case, and I'm trying to avoid the word indoctrination, mm -hmm. but it keeps creeping into my uh, mind, it's similar to that. In other words, we want people in this country who believe in this country, who have been inculcated, inculcated with our values. If someone just jumps the fence and has a baby here, there's that, that process is missing. We have people in our country then who share no allegiance with the rest of us in terms of sharing American values. And we feel, I think the country feels, and the founders felt, those kinds of people we don't need here. We want people who love this country based upon the fact that they had a child here and they share our values or the child, once it got older, became a naturalized citizen. And you know, some of the most patriotic people that I've ever met are legal immigrants. Absolutely. People that have waited in line, people have gone through an arduous process over 12 years sometimes it takes to get citizenship, but they kept their nose to the grindstone, didn't get convicted of any crimes, much less a misdemeanor, and they've gone through the process, took the citizenship test, and they absolutely have, they're as patriotic as everybody else. And so... Even more so, and especially people from Eastern Europe, for instance, who've experienced uh, Russia or even people from communist China who come here. They've, they've lived... Uh, the kind of life that we all uh, are so happy that we don't have to live through. And I, I, here in Southern California, we have a very large Vietnamese population that yes. came to came to these shores you know, shortly after the war ended, when the communists took over. And I, I, I'm friends with several Vietnamese families who have become naturalized citizens, and they absolutely love this country, and they have the best Fourth of July parties. I've ever been to. And we're going to talk a, well, a little bit more, wrap this up. There's a particular term of art regarding birthright citizenship uh, that I want to talk about, the rules of construction. So we're going to talk about that right after the break, you guys. Stick around here in the Legal Lounge, CRN Digital Talk Radio, crntalk.com, also available 
on Facebook, facebook.com, and all previous sessions are available of this fine quality broadcast. They're available in audio on crntalk.com slash podcaster and available in videos in stunning high definition on YouTube, youtube.com. Just find the CRN Digital Talk Radio YouTube channel, and you can find Richard Nixon Live's playlist. So we'll be right back right after the break. Stay with us. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares. Plus, save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. And we are back here in the Legal Lounge, CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com. Just wrapping things up about this birthright citizenship issue. Uh, Richard, and you've outlined so eloquently that uh, there is precedent and standing for the President of the United States to act unilaterally to end her birthright citizenship. But uh, there's also language within the 14th Amendment itself, Section 5, that actually Congress can address this issue. And this would probably be the, you know, the, the most constitutionalist way to do that because the Congress, the people's branch, the elected officials, they're the ones that should be making law, not yes. the executives, not the uh, the judicial branch. Absolutely. So, so what would Section 5 of the 14th Amendment entail? All right. Now, when we talk about the Citizenship Clause, it's the Section 1 of the 14th Amendment, 1868, but we can't forget that that 14th Amendment has a Section 5, and that Section 5 says that Congress shall have power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. So, to use your term, Mike, the drafters of the 14th Amendment were prescient enough to realize that they should, should Congress decide to flesh out or flesh in, I should say, the 14th Amendment, they were given um, authority to do so. That is to say that Congress is empowered to amend the 14th Amendment without another amendment. That is to say, just through plain old congressional legislation, which, of course, would have to be signed by the president. So, but again, since we have a Democrat House, I don't think the chances of uh, that's happening is very likely. And therefore, I say that Trump could do it by executive order because, again, there is no contradictory law that's been written or even passed by the Supreme Court. Uh, so looking at the Supreme Court, excuse me, looking at the Constitution as written and Senator Howard's explanation for what was meant by the 14th Amendment uh, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof clause, I think 
uh, President Trump would prevail were someone to sue him, claiming he didn't have the authority to do this. And there's a term that you brought to my attention that is pertinent to the birthright citizenship issue, a term of art, a term of law that I was unfamiliar with, rules of construction. Richard, what is rule? what are the rules of construction? How does it apply to this issue? Well, thank you, Mike. That's a good question. And what it has to do with is this, that all lawyers and judges, even those who went to Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, learned the so-called rules of construction. And I'll, I'll quote from a particular typical case, this is in many, many cases where the Court of Appeals, whether it's federal or state, are called upon to interpret a statute, a proposition, or even a provision of a constitution. And basically what it says is that the justices would say, we begin our analysis with the plain language of the statute. If the statutory text is plain and unambiguous, we must apply the statute according to its terms. So in other words, where the words are clear, we as judges, as judicial officers, must apply the words as written. So we, we, we don't have the latitude to change those words. However, as we all know, the, the courts do. They ignore what I've just read. And if the language of a statute is ambiguous, we may use canons of overall canons of construction, I'm sorry, legislative history, and the statute's overall purpose to illuminate Congress's intent. So again, what the court's purpose is to be is fulfilling legislative intent based upon the fact that the legislature represent what the people want. Yeah. So uh, the judge is not in a position to counterman what the legislature wants. Their, their function is to find out the intent of the legislature and apply those rules as as they become known. But that's that's when it gets into a sticky situation. Yes. When we're we're I actually wrote that down. Illuminate Congress's intent because yes. that's that's based on the eye of the beholder and just jurisdiction, correct? Well, that's right. But you see, there uh, it goes further. For instance, in in this particular instance where we say all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, many people have said, well, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, all that means is, yeah, the person was born here, and of course he's subject to the jurisdiction here. No, they are not, they are not equal statements. Because, again, one of the rules of construction says that we will avoid surplusage and things that contradict each other. So in other words, it's redundant f if, if they mean the same thing. If being born here and being subject to the jurisdiction thereof are the same, in fact, th same thing, mm -hmm. then one is redundant. We don't need them both. And therefore, we as judicial officers must give some other content to the words and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. They, it does not mean that you're simply born here. So we just, as we said earlier, we're, fortunately we do know what and subject to the jurisdiction thereof actually meant because we have Senator Howard's own documents saying that that actually meant that we have to look at, to the parents and see what country or to what country or entity the parents owed allegiance. If it was allegiance to a country or an entity other than the United States, that child's being born here is not a citizen. Said that in, in black and white, correct? Absolutely. All right, very, very, that settles it as far as I'm concerned. Be right back, you guys, wrap things up. Maybe talk a little bit about uh, Equal Protection Act and Women in the Workplace right after the break. You guys, any questions, comments, or concerns, drop us a note on Facebook, facebook.com slash Talk, or shoot Richard an email, richardnixon at crntalk.com. Follow him on Twitter, at richardanixon1. We'll be right back right after the break. Do you own 
owe back taxes to the IRS? Newsflash, the president has changed the tax laws. And now, you may be able to pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, the tax doctor can help you pay the IRS as little as possible allowed by law. There are new tax laws for business owners, the self-employed, even W-2 workers. If you have a back tax problem or a few years of unfilled returns, new help to save you money is now here. Call right now to see how the new tax laws can help you. Plus, right now, we'll waive the consultation fee and give you a free tax savings report. Attention business owners, the self-employed, and W-2 workers. Make this free call to the tax doctor now and learn how to take advantage of the new tax laws that may help you pay the IRS less. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Hi everyone, this is Fred Dreyer telling you about my favorite Italian restaurant. It's Angelo's and Vinci's in Fullerton, California. Angelo's and Vinci's has the best pasta, the best seafood, the best salad, spaghetti, lasagna, and the most incredible pizza. And the chicken is delicious. Marsala, piccata, cacciatore, parmigiana, and more. For desserts, try our spumoni or our tiramisu, my favorite, flown in fresh from Italy. And the cannolis and the zeppolis are out of this world. Open for lunch and dinner. And don't miss the Sunday champagne brunch. Just $23.95. Are you kidding me? It's all up the road from Disneyland at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton, California. Angelo's and Vinci's, like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. Call 714-879-4022 or visit us online at angeloandvinci's.com. And we are back here in the Legal Lounge, Sierra and Digital Talk Radio, Richard Nixon Live, broadcasting coast to coast and around the world at SierraandTalk.com, also available on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook, anywhere you can find us. There we are. And Richard, uh, 14th Amendment we talked a lot about today, but there's another particular clause in the 14th Amendment, the Equal Protection Clause. And I bring this up because uh, recently uh, California uh Governor Newsom has uh, enacted legislation requiring a certain number of female board members on corporate boards based in California. We talked about this last week. Check out the podcast if you want to know more. But I was thinking, and, and you brought this to my attention uh, once again, that maybe this violates equal protection. Well, yes, but you see, equal protection, as used in the U.S. Constitution, uh, really only applied, that's the 14th Amendment again, only applied to the slave versus the non-slave. It it was 1868 when we had the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, and basically its purpose was to make the former slave now equal to the non-slave. So it had nothing to do with male versus female, woman versus man. It had to do with slave versus non-slave. However, the California Constitution, California Constitution, does have its own Equal Protection Clause, and it does cover um, basically men versus women. And so the people who are 
opposed to uh, hiring all these women in place of men, are arguing that it's clearly a violation of equal protection in that they are discriminating now against men. So not only this would be a violation of equal protection in the California state constitution yes. if, if A, the, the state, the, Cal, the state of California mandated all male boards or all female boards or Correct. even any sort of metrics based on gender or race on their corporate boards, that violates equal protection against somebody, right? Absolutely. So we really have to watch this moving forward because equal protection, like you said, Richard, I mean, it was, it's just like the citizenship clause was used to protect freed slaves. And now it seems that both the equal protection and the citizenship clause are being used for means beyond what they're intended for. Yes. And again, I, I, I'm old enough to have lived through the, well, the beginning of what I call the uh, emasculation of men in this country. The women have been on the move since the 60s, if you will where uh, we had what has been called many times uh, carefree sex. Women decided they could behave the same as men and party and not worry about uh, the ramifications of uh, acting like men. In, in any event, uh, women have, over the years, decided, some groups of women have decided that men, men are the enemy and men needed to be um, put in their place uh, and this is just a further extension of emasculation of men in this country. And for no other reason than the fact that I'm a man, I am adamantly opposed to it. Opposed to this particular legislation? Absolutely. Well, very interesting. We'll see how that works out when you get home in the future. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it, what she said. I think has a, a ring of truth. I think that the second wave feminism of the 1970s uh, is something that people should look into, and how militant that that became. Uh, I think that was supplanted by the third wave of feminism in the late 80s, early 90s, which I think is a little bit more inclusive, less militant, and less separatist. And so, that's any uh, women's studies or communication majors out there, you can look into that. Uh, Richard, once again, thank you so much for a very enlightening uh, afternoon for both myself and our listeners. We're here every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific time. And we uh, replay throughout the weekend as well. And like I said, available uh, on demand as a podcast, CRN.com slash podcaster and on demand in video and stunning crystal clear high definition on our YouTube channel. You go to CRNtalk.com and find our YouTube channel there as well. Or search YouTube for CRN Digital Talk and find Richard's playlist. And Richard, kudos to our buddies in Hong Kong. Keep yeah. it going. Absolutely. To all of our friends, all freedom loving people. Thank you so much and keep it up until next week. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, if you've in, been in the legal lounge, see your digital talk radio, see talk.com. Which is most important because that was your theme. Are you tired of hearing your favorite talk radio show sound like this? What if you could hear your favorite shows in crystal clear, high-definition digital sound? Well, with CRN Digital Talk Radio's six channels of high-definition radio, you can now hear all of your favorite hosts like you've never heard them before in CRN HD. The difference is amazing. Catch your favorite political hosts like Dennis Prager, Tom Hartman, Barry Farber, and so many more. Entertainment and lifestyle programming like the Robert Conrad Show, the What's Cooking Show, and the What's Cooking on Wine Show, all in true CRN HD audio. Sports, business, travel, food, wine, politics, there is something for everyone, and it's all available in CRN High Definition Sound. Log on to www.crntalk for listings and information on all your favorite shows. That's www.crntalk.com. Thank you. The Radio Channel. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com, I'm Keith Peters. Residents of Puerto Rico are getting ready for another possible hurricane as Tropical Storm Dorian moves closer and closer. San Juan, Tarana Verdeman tells WPLG she's stocking up on supplies ahead of the storm. Just to have enough water and, and enough, you know, canned thing, uh, food. National Hurricane Center Hurricane Specialist John Cangelosi says Dorian is on a path toward Puerto Rico. It is going to be moving across the Caribbean during the next couple of days be pretty close to Puerto Rico, maybe a little to the south and west of the island uh, on Wednesday. A still uncertain long-term track showed the storm near Florida over the weekend.
President Trump is leveling new criticism on the Federal Reserve. President Donald Trump went to Twitter Tuesday to step up his campaign to pressure the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates more quickly. Trump tweeted, the Federal Reserve loves watching our manufacturers struggle with their exports to the benefit of other parts of the world. Bill Dudley, former president of the Fed's New York Regional Bank, responded, writing in a Bloomberg opinion piece that Trump's trade war with China is undermining the confidence of businesses and consumers. The Fed cut rates by a quarter point last month, but Trump wants the Fed to cut a full percentage point after four rate hikes last year. Mike Gracia, Washington. President Trump says he's not going to lose America's wealth on alternative energy sources. The president says he refuses to put the country's economic strength at risk by pursuing questionable climate change policies. I'm not going to lose that wealth. I'm not going to lose it on, on dreams, on windmills. At the same time, he says he wants the cleanest air and water. I'm an environmentalist. A lot of people don't don't understand that. The president also says he thinks he knows more about the environment than most people. White House correspondent Greg Clugston. On Wall Street, the Dow down by 121 points. The Nasdaq dropped 27. The S&P lower by 9. More on these stories at townhall.com. When it comes to your pain, many of you might be skeptical, like I was, about ordering Relief Factor. Pat Boone again for this wonderful 100% drug-free supplement designed to help your own body lower or eliminate occasional aches and pains due to aging, exercise, everyday living. I'm not skeptical any longer. The three-week quick start is now discounted to only $19.95. Why don't you let us see if we can get you out of pain, too, at relieffactor.com. Hi, everybody. This is Dennis Prager. You know, every week I have the male-female hour. And years ago, I recorded at a synagogue, in fact, a four-part series of lectures called Men's Sexual Nature. I talk about adultery, pornography, values, and sexuality, what men want, what they're like, what their nature is. This is the best thing I ever did on male sexuality. The complete four-part series is now 50% off in the Prager Store. Go to PragerStore.com. Just ahead of Labor Day next week, Senator Marco Rubio is taking aim at policies he says separate American workers from their God-given dignity. In an essay for the website First Things entitled What Economics is For, Rubio stresses what he sees as a God-given moral obligation for a society to provide the conditions for meaningful work. While flatly rejecting socialism in favor of private property and enterprise, Rubio also calls on companies to invest in the lives of their workers. Failure to do so, he says, robs workers of the ability to build meaningful lives and the families that work is meant to support. Bob Agnew reporting. State attorneys general and lawyers representing local government say they're in active settlement talks with Purdue Pharma, the maker of the prescription painkiller OxyContin that's facing billions of dollars in potential liability for its role in the nation's opioid crisis. A report by NBC News says the company has offered to settle for $10 billion to $12 billion. News and analysis at townhall.com. I'm Keith Peters. Brazil's leader has spurned Amazon Fire's aid and is now demanding an apology from France's Emmanuel Macron. Bolsonaro says he will only accept an offer of international aid to fight Amazon fires if Macron retracts comments that he finds offensive. Brazil's leader says Macron had called him a liar. Macron, who had questioned Bolsonaro's trustworthiness and commitment to protecting biodiversity, has shrugged off the snub and has said in a speech Bolsonaro's interpretation of the comments is a mistake. The two have been feuding over social media in recent days. I'm Charles Siledesma. A former Google engineer has been charged with stealing self-driving car technology from the company shortly before he joined Uber's efforts to catch up in the race to build robotic vehicles. Anthony Lewandowski is considered a pioneer in robotic vehicles. Today he was charged with 33 counts of trade secrets theft. His lawyers deny wrongdoing. More at townhall.com. Hello, CRN listeners. I'm Michael Horn. And you know, you've all helped build my pillow into the amazing company that it is today. Now, Michael Lindell, the inventor and CEO of my pillow, wants to give back to my listeners. You can get great discounts on all my pillow products if you go to mypillow.com right now and click on the radio listener specials. You can save up to 50% off on my pillows, mattress toppers, bed sheets, and so much more. For example, the body pillow, normally $89.99, but with the promo code 
code WINNER, it's only $29.99. Remember, all MyPillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee and a 10-year warranty. Just go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener specials, save up to 50% off, including the body pillow for only $29.99. Enter promo code WINNER or call 800-513-3363 for these great specials. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Hi, everybody. Michael Horn from What's Cooking Today. We call it the nation's food, wine, restaurant, travel, and entertainment show. Uh, we have guests on the air. We talk about food news and a whole lot more and keep you informed on what's going on for your lifestyle. Food, wine, restaurant, travel, entertainment. Hear it uh, on CRN at 8 a.m. Pacific time, live every day with replays at 3 p.m. and again at 11 p.m. So join me. What's cooking today? Michael Horn right here on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Do you want your headphones on? Okay. We'll bring a drink, okay? Bless your heart. Over here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Where's my feed? What? Here, here we are. Everything's okay. Okay, good. Are we talking to the American people the way they like to be talked to? Here are my plans. Here are my plans for the next hour of my broadcast life. Adrian Vance has now decided who will not be the Democratic nominee, and more to the point, who will be. And then, and then, and then, I've got one of the strangest stories uh, ever told certainly the strangest I've ever told on the air. But first things first. Adrian, tell me more. Tell me more. You have now come up with your conclusions. You've done your prayer, fasting, and meditation. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the results are in. The turtle shells are baked. Uh, uh, the e leaves, the two leaves, uh, are telling their tale uh, at the top of their lungs and top of their lungs. Your turn. The world awaits your verdict, Adrian. Well, I'm appropriately sitting atop a giant pillow with my legs crossed, and I'm wearing a funny-looking hat. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, I think this whole thing is very simple. The fact of the matter is Joe Biden is not a well man at all. And I think that if this thing continues very long, he may well have a stroke and, and die uh, at the microphone, you know, or on a stage somewhere. <clears throat> and I think he, he really needs to get out of this thing because it is, and, and you know, his wife is a doctor, for God's sake, and mm -hmm. she's promoting this thing for, for him to continue in it. I, don't, I do not understand that at all because this lady knows better. He had... Three aneurysms, I think it was four or five years ago, or maybe longer. And when you do that, when that happens, you've got to be very, pretty careful. And he's he's really he's really overdoing, and I I think he is in real danger. But he's going down anyway because of all of these gaffes. And the way I look at this thing, Elizabeth Warren is really coming up strongly because. She appeals both to the hard left people in the Democrat Party and she has the credentials to appeal to the people in the middle and, and on, the, on the right of, of the Democrat Party, so, such as they are. But, you know, the people who, are, who really should be conservatives but somehow lost their way. <laughs> and, and I think that she'll run away with it at the convention. You don't think the Pocahontas thing is yeah. going to be an albatross, a lead oh. weight albatross around her neck. <laughs> yeah, because th there's a real case against that. I mean, this lady made $4 million over, over the years on a false identity. I mean, there's no other way you can say it. Well, okay, so uh, um, Joe Biden uh, will not do the Democratic nominee. That honor will go to Elizabeth Warren, right? 
according to Adrian Vance, uh, and let's say so we've got Warren, uh, and poor Bernie is out completely. Oh, yeah. Biden with, okay, all right, good. We've got a record of this, and we will shower you with glory <laughs> uh, if you are right, and we'll pretend we weren't really listening if you were wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1 800 785 9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Adrian Vance on our newsmaker line, who is a teacher, a writer, a broadcaster, talk host, written over a dozen books. Uh, he is a scientist. He is an inventor. He has the patent for the fuel farm. Uh, by the way, his books are very good, and more good ones uh, are on the way. <clears throat> he is America's champion anti-global warming, climate change. Oh, I wish we had more leaders with the brains and the guts uh, of Adrian Vance. <clears throat> Now, I deliberately didn't tell you what I have in mind for the rest of this hour because you wouldn't listen. It's a good thing I'm not my own boss uh, <laughs> because if I were, I'd fire myself uh, for doing this. Mm. This is a subject which will interest virtually nobody. Uh, somebody once said Barry Farber appeals to a small, select group of confused people. Well, oh, I'll prove God. that. Oh, I'm teasing. I, I, I'll prove that. Uh, yeah, but, I, I was going to ask you for a reference. I've never heard that <laughs> yeah, and, after all yeah. these years. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try my luck. I'm going to tell you a story that comes all the way to us from the early 1940s. This is so hot. It is a bombshell, but it's not going to go off and harm anybody else. This is a long story, a rather dull story, unless we're really in to the esoterica of World War II. Give me a break. I don't do this even once a year. I don't do it once in a decade, maybe twice, three times in a broadcast career. But I'll try to be merciful, because if it is your thing, then you're going to be riding very high as you ponder and reponder what you hear between now and the top of the hour. It was World War II, and there was a radio show in America, which was the absolute dullest show in the history of the world. They had uh, four people, four heavy thinkers. Uh, I mean, they were really up there where the elephants make love, and they uh, never never um, uh, got close to interesting anybody. But uh, they had a, uh, a deal where uh, you write in, you know, when the war was raging and they were taking questions from listeners. And if your question were asked, if you were a listener and you wrote in a question that the, the producers of the show thought was good enough, uh, you were awarded with a with an encyclopedia, which used to be the size of a barn, and it, you can now hold in the palm of your hand, right? Uh, right. All that knowledge. So anyhow, uh, here um, we, uh, I, I, I was a t I wasn't even a teenager yet. 
and I was a very precocious student of World War II. I remember every jot and tittle you know, of Hitler's conquest for annexation with Austria, conquest of Czechoslovakia, alliance with Hungary, get this now, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia. They were swallowed up half by Russia uh, under a pact with Hitler uh, and half by Germany. Uh, they uh, were bordered uh, with, by Poland, uh, and then um, we had Czechoslovakia, uh, Austria, uh, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, Hungary. Hitler had a belt of either conquered countries or allies on his eastern border uh, for protection. He wanted to be sure that he had the knockout punch for Russia. And there we were. So I had a question. Um, as you know, Leningrad uh, was under siege for over a thousand days. Yeah. It is not spoken of broadly enough. The, the, the uh, privation, the, the, they even resorted to cannibalism, the cold, the starvation, absolutely epic. But the Russians held the line. The Germans never took Leningrad. They tried, they tried, they tried, they threw everything they had. And I had what I thought as a pretender was a very good question. And as an old man today, I still think it was a good question. I did not win a prize. I did not win an encyclopedia. But listen to what I did win. Here we had the war. And my, look at the map. If you have the map handy, you know, even the map of your memory, you know that Leningrad is uh, is uh, about a thousand miles north of, of Leningrad, and you're still in Russia. You're in yeah. the Arctic Circle, um, headed toward the North Pole, and the, the the Soviets were very heavily dependent on arms from the West. The convoys would gather in the United Kingdom and they would go sailing north, 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 way above the Arctic Circle. And then they would come down in Murmansk and Markings, Archangel. Uh, well, they, uh, I, I couldn't figure out why the Germans didn't, were not as smart as I was. Why try or why invest so many troops uh, and, and still not be able to take Leningrad. Why not take a couple of divisions and go north and slice across the Kola Peninsula, which right. was very lightly defended, Adrian, very lightly defended yeah. uh, by the Russians, yeah. and cut the railroad line. Absolutely. Well, well why didn't they? Well. I never got an answer, never got a letter, never got a call back, never got an encyclopedia. But I never quit wondering. And finally, I got a, an answer which is as fascinating now as it was then. Can't wait to tell you about it. Here we had, uh, just look at any map, I think every tactician in the world will agree Hitler could have knifed across the Kola Peninsula north of Leningrad and cut the rail line to Murmansk, right. cut the lifeline to the west. Why didn't they? Well, later in life, I ran into Jack Kochak, a Jewish Finn, a Finnish Jew, who mm. gave me the answer. Now, he was a lieutenant in the Finnish army. Finland was Hitler's only democratic ally. Uh, and uh, the Finns made it very clear to the whole world they were not fighting for Germany. They were not Nazis. 
They had total disdain for Hitler, their ally. All they were fighting for is to recapture the land that Russia took from them in yeah. the Winter War of 1939. Adrian, are you with me so far? Yes, I am. Yeah, right. This is oh, very hang interesting. Hang it. Hang it. We'll be right back. Oh, it, one person found that interesting. I'm running ahead <laughs> of expectations. We'll be right back. Hello, CRN listeners. I'm Michael Horn. And you know, you've all helped build my pillow into the amazing company that it is today. Now, Michael Lindell, the inventor and CEO of my pillow, wants to give back to my listeners. You can get great discounts on all my pillow products if you go to mypillow.com right now and click on the radio listener specials. You can save up to 50% off on my pillows, mattress toppers, bed sheets, and so much more. For example, the body pillow, normally $89.99, but with the promo code code winner it's only 29.99 remember all my pillow products come with a 60 day money back guarantee and a 10 year warranty just go to mypillow.com click on the radio listener specials save up to 50% off including the body pillow for only 29.99 enter promo code winner or call 800-513-3363 for these great specials for the best night's sleep in the whole wide world visit mypillow.com Need a powerful ally to fight daily bugs and serious pathogens? Allison Med is the powerful universal pathogen killer's latest advance of German-sourced Allison, enzymatically stabilized to clear the body of bacteria, fungi, mycobacteria, and parasites. It penetrates body biofilms and is non-toxic to tissues. Pathogen resistance cannot develop for long-term body-optimized wellness. Clear stealth pathogens that promote autoimmune disease, cancer and vascular inflammation and plaque and promote healing of tissues. Now pathogen-free. With 200 milligrams more power than prior Alamed, you can't get a more powerful ally to fight daily bugs and serious pathogens. Give your body what it needs. Allison Med. Order Dr. Bill Deagle's Nutridyne at 888-212-8871 or Nutramedical.com. That's 1-888-212-8871 or Nutramedical.com. And listen to the Nutramedical Report on the Genesis Radio Network with open lines every weekday. Nutramedical.com, bringing nutrition and medicine together. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares, plus save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. doing without the music, um, uh, we'll excuse uh, everybody uh, who failed to show up for music practice. Um, we will get right back to World War II and the German effort that never succeeded in occupying Leningrad. Uh, the Russians held where it counted, Leningrad in the north, Moscow in the middle, and Kiev uh, in the south. 